A little while ago, we had the great privilege of promoting the launch of our brand new product from UK manufacturers Quickwire, the 24 amp splitter. Newest eFix recruit Joe 3PO tried them out and demoed how they could get you out of a couple of serious scrapes. Now, we're big fans of Quickwire products here at eFix. They're innovative and make electricians' lives easier. And as with all new products, our review raised questions among the intellectual sparkies out there, as well as one bizarre argument about whether the UK or the Netherlands have greater freedom of speech. I don't know. Welcome to the internet. Anyway, I can't answer that one, but I can answer several of the others. So here they are, your top seven questions about the Quickwire splitter answered. Question number one, is the splitter maintenance free? To answer this one, we can dive into BS7671. Regulation 526.3 states, every connection shall be accessible for inspection, testing, and maintenance, except for the following. It then lists a number of methods of connection that could be classed as maintenance free, which basically leads you to the conclusion that screws are out. But then in indent six, it gives you the option of equipment complying with BS5733 for a maintenance free accessory and marked with the symbol MF and installed in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. If we look at the spec sheet for the 24 amp splitter, you can see that it does indeed comply with BS5733. And looking at the body of the splitter, it is marked with the little MF symbol to show that it's maintenance free. This brings us nicely onto question number two. Does the splitter need to be fixed in place? To answer this question, we need to turn back in the regs a little to 522.8.5, which states, every cable or conductor shall be supported in such a way that it is not exposed to undue mechanical strain and so that there is no appreciable mechanical strain on the terminations of the conductors, account being taken of the mechanical strain imposed by the supported weight of the cable or conductor itself. So in other words, when you make an electrical connection, you need to make sure that the conductors aren't pulling on the terminals, either by the weight of the cable on them or if the cable gets pulled on for some reason. This is the reason it was important that old school circular junction boxes were fixed down because they had no cable grip or strain relief. So you'd need to screw them down and then clip the cables up close to the box to prevent strain. But what about our quick wire splitter? Does it need screwing down? Well, regulation 526.3 that we read earlier told us that in order to make a maintenance free connection compliant, we need to follow the manufacturer's instructions for installation. The instructions from Quickwire state that the splitter can be fixed in place using the clever clips they provide that lock into the molding of the splitter and hold it securely in place. There's a couple of different versions of this clip that you'd use depending on which type of splitter you're installing. However, the instructions don't say that you have to do this to make the product maintenance free. The reason for this is that as you make the connection into the splitter, these clear plastic pieces have a little tooth that bite into the outer sheath and hold it securely in place, therefore providing strain relief to the terminals and complying with regulation 522.8.5. So to summarize, the splitter doesn't need to be fixed in place in order to maintain its maintenance free rating. However, if you want to keep your installation as neat and tidy as possible, you probably would fix it in place. Our third question is, are the splitters waterproof? To answer this question, I'm going to subject a couple of these to some tests. I've got a couple of cables terminated into this splitter with an insulation resistance tester connected to the cables. First of all, I'll drop the splitter into this tub of water and you can see that almost immediately the tester registers a fault between the conductors. Now, that's a bit of an extreme test, so let's get a fresh splitter and mist it with this squirty bottle. And you can see that after a few squirts, we're getting a fault again. This is because the splitter is rated at IP30, which means it has no protection against the ingress of moisture. This is not a bad thing, it's simply not designed to be in areas where it will get wet. The three in the IP rating indicates that it's rated to prevent the ingress of tools and wires greater than 2.5 millimeters in diameter. Which brings us nicely onto our fourth question. Can the splitters be buried and plastered over? This is an interesting one because you can immediately see the benefit of this. A cable gets nailed in the wall and needs repairing. So could you chop enough of the cable out to access it for terminating, make the conductors off, bury the splitter in the wall and plaster over it? Now this one gave me a bit of pause and I had to give it a fair bit of thought and then get my musings confirmed by the techie folks at Quickwire. So here goes. If you bury a connection in a wall, the connection must be by definition maintenance free. As we've discussed, the splitter is maintenance free. So that's one condition ticked. However, we just demonstrated that the splitter has no protection against the ingress of moisture. So if you were to apply wet plaster or bonding or filler directly to the splitter, I suspect the moisture inside there would creep into the connections and cause you some problems. So if you were to bury it in the wall, you'd need to have some protection against moisture between the damp plaster and the splitter. If that was in place, then you should be okay to chop it into a wall and plaster over it. Question five, is that a fuse under the little flap there? 
This is a very reasonable question, as it does look a lot like the little fuse carriers that you might get on a spur. But if it was a fuse, then that would lead to some interesting situations. For instance, if it's a maintenance-free connection and installed somewhere inaccessible, then how would you replace the fuse if it blew? And if you used it to repair a cable in a ring final circuit and the fuse blew, you'd then have two radial circuits connected to a 32 amp MCB. In both cases, that could present a major problem for your circuit. So, for that reason, we can confirm it's not a fuse. If we slide a screwdriver under here and open it up, you can see that under there, are three small holes that act as terminals for your test probes if you need to do any testing or fault finding at the point where you've got this installed. And having solved that mystery, I'd just like to point out that even in this little flap, there's care and thought gone into the design of it. You can see that it won't fall out as it's captured on the inside and it's molded in such a way that it moves back out of the way, giving you full access to the terminals. Clever stuff. And now we come to a question which actually relates to the stripper that forms part of the Quickwire ecosystem. Question six. Can I replace the blades in the flat cable stripper? Over a long period of time, the blades either side of this stripping device will lose their edge and lead to a less clean finish on the insulation. And when this happens, there's no need to go and buy a whole new set because if you've got the second gen version of this tool, you'll be able to undo these two little screws, slide the blades out of the jaw and replace them with new ones that you can order directly from the Quickwire website. And before you know it, you're ready to start tackling those pesky twin earths again. Now for question seven, and this is the biggie. If this splitter is only rated at 24 amps, then how can we use it on a 32 amp ring final circuit? To answer this question, you'll have to go over and watch this video right here, as one of the other Joes here at eFix answers that for us. Or to see the full review of this ingenious product, check out this video right here. All that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.